pivot tables. A pivot table is a tool that you can use to summarize data when you have a lot of it in a worksheet. A pivot table can count totals, give an average of the data, or sort data, in addition to other things. In this lesson, we're going to go in depth as we learn to create and work with pivot tables. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to use recommended pivot tables, create a pivot table from scratch, format a pivot table, create multiple pivot tables, move a pivot table, delete a pivot table, use filters, sort data, refresh data and verify data in a pivot table. Recommended pivot tables is a feature that is new to Excel 2013. With recommended pivot tables, Excel analyzes the data that you have in your spreadsheet, then suggests possible pivot tables for you to use. Take a look at our worksheet here. This worksheet is simply a list of items, the price for each item, the quantity sold, the total price, and then the date sold. To see recommended pivot tables, click anywhere inside the data in the worksheet. Go to the Insert tab, then click on Recommended Pivot Tables. You'll then see the Recommended Pivot Tables dialog box. In this dialog box, you'll see Excel's Recommended Pivot Tables. As you can see, in our Recommended Pivot Tables, Excel summarizes the data by the price of each item, the total price, and the number of items. If you want to use one of these suggested pivot tables, simply click on the pivot tables in the column on the left. We've chosen the total price for each item, which is the second one here. That pivot table is now visible in the right column. Click the OK button. The pivot table is then placed into a new sheet, as you can see here. Now we've just learned how to get Excel to create pivot tables for us. Now let's learn how to create a pivot table on our own from scratch. We're going to use the same worksheet that we used when creating the recommended pivot tables one. So go back to sheet one here. In starting to create your own pivot table, you do not need to select or highlight data. The only way that you would be required to select data is if you had a blank column or row within your data. Of course, you wouldn't want that included in your pivot table, so you would select the data that you did want included. To start creating a pivot table, Click within the data, then go to the Insert tab. Click on the Pivot Table button. In the Select a Table or Range field, Excel fills in the range of cells that contains your data. You can compare the range of cells listed here with our worksheet, and you can see that all the data was included. Unless you need to change the range of cells, you don't need to enter anything into this field. Next, decide if you want the pivot table to appear in the existing worksheet with your data, or in a new worksheet. It's recommended that you place it into a new worksheet, but the choice is ultimately yours. If you place it in the existing worksheet, you need to specify the location where you want to place it. Click OK. This is what you'll see in your new worksheet. This is where your pivot table will start. If you look to the far right of the Excel window, you'll see pivot table fields. You'll use this to create your pivot table. In the top section, you'll see your columns listed. The bottom section contains the sections of your pivot table. The filters is the filter above the pivot table. Columns are the column headings. Rows are the row headings. And values are the crossover of the rows and columns. The only thing in the bottom section that you need to make a pivot table is the values. You'll find that rows, columns, and filters help organize the data and information in the pivot table. To see what we mean, let's choose a column from the top half. We're going to choose item. We want each item to appear in a row, so we drag it to the row section in the bottom half. Next, we're going to click on an item in the top half again and drag it to the value section. All you have to do is drag and drop. Now, if we look at our pivot table on the left, we can see that Excel has summarized the number of each item in our worksheet. Remember, this is the number of times that the item appears in our data. It's not an inventory count. Now let's say we wanted to add another column to our pivot table. We're going to drag the date sold from the top section to the column section in the bottom half. Have a look at our pivot table now. Now we can see which items sold in which months. With pivot tables, there's something you need to keep in mind. If you drop a text field such as an item into values, 
Excel will assume you want to count the values. This is what we did, and it counted the number of occurrences of the item in our data. If you drop a numerical field into values, Excel will assume you want a sum of the items. Let's redo our pivot table by dragging total price into the values section and removing the item. If you make a mistake and drag something into values, columns, filters or rows that you don't want there, you can simply click and drag it back to the top section. This will remove it, just like we did then with items. You can also drag and drop to and from values, columns, rows and filters. You can do these things to create the pivot table that you want. It's easy to create a pivot table in Excel 2013, but that's just where the fun begins. Now that you created the pivot table, it's time to learn how to format it. You can see our pivot table here. If you wanted to format the data in the pivot table, you could do so by selecting a column or row and then going to the Home tab and applying formatting, such as changing the font type, font size or font colour. Those are very basic Excel skills and easy enough for you to do. However, if you applied formatting in this manner, if you ever refresh the data in your pivot table or added rows or columns, the formatting might not be applied. Instead, go to the panel on the right side of the Excel window where we created the pivot table. In the bottom section of the pivot table, click the downward arrow to the right of the field you want to format. In this example, we're going to click the downward arrow to the right of the item field. Click on Field Settings. This will bring up the Field Settings window. However, in order to show you a better example, we're going to click on the field Sum of Total Price in the Values section. Then click on Field Settings from this menu. We'll then see the Value Field Settings dialog box. In this dialog box, we can change the name of the field in the pivot table by going to the Custom Name field. Right now, we have the cells in this field formatted so all the numbers display as currency. If we wanted to change that, we'd click on the Number Format button. Choose the formatting for your cells, and then click OK. This will return you to the Value Field Settings dialog box. Also in the Value Field Settings dialog box, we can change the function. Right now, we have it at the default, which is Sum. It can be changed to Count, Average, Max, Min, and much more. All of these functions relate to the total price. For example, average of the total price, and so on. Click OK when you're finished. You can see the formatting has been updated. You can also add the same field more than once. This means that if you wanted, you could change the function for the total price field to count. Then you could drag the total price field to the value section again, which would display the sum of total price. Let's see how we could do that. We can change this to count and click OK. Now drag total price to that same value section and see sum of total. Just make sure you change the number format that matches the function. We wouldn't want currency for the count function as you can see here. So let's go and change that. The count, we want to change that to number. We also want to remove the decimal places. And then for sum, we want to change that to accounting. As you can see in the pivot table, you now have columns for the count and the sum values. You can create as many pivot tables as you need to using the same data from the same worksheet. You can choose to place the pivot tables together, or you can place them in different worksheets. We're going to create another pivot table by clicking in the data. So go back to the original sheet, and then click on Insert Pivot Table. As you can see in this dialog box, We've chosen to place the new pivot table in the same worksheet as the pivot table that we created earlier. We did this by choosing the existing worksheet, then clicking on the tab of the worksheet that contained the pivot table, and then click on the cell where we want the upper left hand corner of the pivot table to be placed. Now click OK. You can now see our new pivot table below the existing pivot table. We can now add columns, rows, and values to our new pivot table by following the steps we learned earlier in the lesson. You can move a pivot table to a new location within a worksheet or to a new worksheet entirely. To move a pivot table, click on the data within the pivot table, 
Then click on the Analyze tab under the Pivot Table tools in the ribbon, as shown here. Then click Move Pivot Table in the Actions group. You should know that some Excel 2013 users may see an Action button instead. In this case, click Action and then Move Pivot Table. You then see this dialog box. You can choose to move the pivot table to a new worksheet or you can click on a cell in the existing worksheet where you want to place the pivot table. Then click OK. The pivot table is then moved for you. To delete the pivot table, click within the data, then go to the Analyze tab under the Pivot Table Tools section in the ribbon. Click the Select button, then choose the entire pivot table. This selects the pivot table. You can then press delete on your keyboard. In this example here, you can see we have a simple pivot table. You can see that we've dragged and dropped the item field into the row section and have total price in the value section in order to create a pivot table. Now we're going to learn what happens when you drag a field to the filters section. When we do this, we can see that the filter is added above our pivot table. If we click the downward arrow to the right of date sold, we see our filtering options. We can now filter the data in our pivot table by the date the items were sold. Of course, we can also add another filter to our pivot table to further refine the data that's summarized in the table. Let's drag the quantity field to the filters section. If we go to the pivot table and click the drop down arrow besides quantity, we can choose a quantity to filter the data by. Click OK when you've chosen how you want to filter the data. You'll then see the changes to your pivot table. To undo that, just click on the filter again and then select all. Data in a pivot table can be sorted by row or column labels, as well as values. Whenever you create a pivot table, Excel does the sorting for you. Excel puts row and column labels in the order that they appeared in the original data worksheet. If you want to sort row or column labels, simply click the drop down arrow that appears to the right of either the row labels or column labels. You can see the row labels here. We're going to click the down arrow. As you can see here, we're now given the ability to sort the labels alphabetically from A to Z or Z to A. We're going to click on sort A to Z. Now if you want to sort the values in a pivot table, click the downward arrow again. This time, click on the More Sort options. You then see the following dialog box. Choose if you want to sort the values from A to Z or Z to A by putting a check beside your choice. Now click the down arrow in the field below your choice, as shown here. You can see that we also sort by sum total of price, or our values. Select the option and then click OK. Our data is then sorted by the values. A pivot table is based on data that is contained in a worksheet. If you change the data in the worksheet after you've created the pivot table, you'll need to refresh the data in the pivot table so that it reflects the current data in the original worksheet. Let's show you what we mean so that that makes sense. Here's our pivot table again. Now we're going to go back to our original worksheet. Let's say, as an example, that there's been a price increase for the porcelain duck. It's currently $5.99, but we're now going to make it $7.99. To change that, all we have to do is click in the cell and then make the change. However, when we go back to our pivot table, the sum of price in each column still reflects the $5.99 per unit pricing, which is also the total here. We can check the total here because it's been updated to $39.95, but our pivot table still says $29.95. We need to refresh the data so that the changes made in the original data are reflected in our pivot table. To do this, go to the Analyze tab under the Pivot Table tools. Go to Refresh, and then click Refresh All. As you can see, the data in our pivot table is now refreshed. Another thing you can do to make sure your data stays refreshed is to set your options in Excel so the data in your pivot table is refreshed each time you open the workbook. To do this, go to the Analyze tab again. Click the Options button in the Pivot Table group, and then click on Options. You'll then see this dialog box. Click the Data tab. 
put a check mark besides refresh data when opening file, then click OK. Click OK on this message when it appears. It's easy to take for granted that the data presented in a pivot table is correct. However, if you ever wanted to double check and make sure that the data is correct, there's an easy way to do that. Let's say we want to verify that the price of the football really is $5.99. To do this, double click on the cell that contains the value that you want to double check. In this case, it's this cell here with football. When you double click on the cell, Excel pulls up the data that it used to come up with this number. In our case, it's the row entry for the football. However, if the value you clicked on used multiple bits of data, it would list all the data that it used to produce the value. The data shown here is displayed in a new worksheet. You can choose whether you want to keep it in the worksheet or delete it.